Well, I am Hunk Anderson, and uh, otherwise alias Harry W. Anderson. And I was born in upstate New York, in Corning, New York. My father was a gaffer, which is a glassblower for Corning Glassworks in Steuben, glassware. And uh, maybe some of the, the ideas, that some of the interests may, uh, in art may have come from that basic background. Uh, I'm married to a very, very wonderful woman known as Moo Anderson. I went to school at Hobart College in Geneva, New York, and right after the war. As a result of that, we were under the GI Bill, obviously. There were three of us that were together as uh, roommates at the first uh, dormitory that we stayed in uh, in 1946. And as a result of that exposure, three of us got involved in other little projects to actually earn a little extra money. And uh, we, we printed up lecture notes on a very major course that we had there called The History of Western Civilization. Uh, we sold them to the kids. They bought them because it was a, a bearcat of a course. It was a 30-hour course. And so that was fairly successful. Uh, we set up another thing of putting advertising on blotters and then giving the blotters to the other st fellow students. And that was successful. And then the college had decided there was a, a small dining facility that was brought in as a result of the influx of the veterans. They ran it for a couple of years and lost a lot of money at it and decided in the uh, spring of 1948 that they would close that for the next year. One of the three of us had been steward of his fraternity house the previous year, and we were sitting around actually in a saloon. And, and a lot of good things happened out of saloons. We said, hey, why don't we try to operate it? They weren't going to open it up again. And this was going to cause a little problem on campus. And so uh, why don't we try to run it? And we'll offer the college a proposal to, if they'll just give us, lease us the building, and we'll run it at, like we would run a fraternity house. Finally, on, on uh, November 21st or, or November 22nd, the college, out of desperation, decided to take us up on our proposal. The three of us had amassed a huge portion of $500 a piece from these other ventures, and uh, we threw that into the kitty, and that was it. On a on a rainy Friday afternoon, we decided, well, let's go to let's do it. We're going to open up in the evening meal and the following Monday, and uh, we still didn't have anybody signed up. We didn't have any food. We did have a, an agreement with a, a cook, a, a very good cook, and so. He was ready, and uh, but we went out and we sold. Actually, we started a Monday night's meal with a 99 students that gave us actually uh, in advance 12.50 for uh, three meals a day, five days away, 15 meals. Uh, fortunately, it was successful from the very beginning. And Hobart has a coordinate college called William Smith College. In the spring, uh, the the uh, William Smith decided they wanted us to run the girls' school as well. And so that was successful. And the next thing we knew, we had 400 colleges and universities, but also in uh, uh, health care and the white collar of business and industry. And uh, then we had some restaurant formats. So that was what we call saga. So it was successful. And as a result of that, it made it possible for us to do other things as well. In 1962, we came to California from three different locations. Actually, Moo and I, we had our first uh, vac well, first real vacation and the first real vacation to Europe. It was in 1964. I think we had a couple of weeks that we were able to get. One of the places we stopped at was the Louvre in, in Paris. And this was, was a spark. We said on our way home, hey, let's try and put together a collection of Impressionism. And we did go to other museums while we were there in Paris. And let's, let's see if we could put together a collection of a couple of dozen major Impressionist paintings, post-Impressionism and so forth. Then we went to work. Uh, I was still very much working. We, we got to know Al Elson at Stanford, and Mu did a fairly regular lecture with him. And I would sneak out of here every once in a while. From that two two dozen Impressionist paintings, 
And I think as we more and more became involved with the art world and the art field, our interest became more and more contemporary. And we had put together maybe, uh, I would say, a dozen. And, and we, th we also had broadened the uh, aspects to kind of the era of Winslow Homer and, and a few other things. As we became more and more interested, we became enamored with the abstract expressionists. Pollock, de Kooning, Klein, Still, and so forth. And we said, well, this is really, from our perspective at least, is the first really great internationally recognized uh, American art movement by American artists. And although I'm sure other people wouldn't uh, necessarily agree with that, but uh, that was our feeling. And at that point, uh, which was right around 69, 70, I would say, that we, we sort of changed gears and said, let's try to put together the best, the best of the best. Uh, and we couldn't do that with the Impressionists because most of the best of the best were in, already in museums or in private collections, and the funds that were, would be necessary to make these purchases would be just horrendous. But we felt we could still collect the abstract Expressionists and still get the best of the best. We had gotten some contacts in the art world through Al Elson. Uh, one of those contacts was Bill Rubin, who was head of painting and sculpture at New York MoMA, and also uh, Jean Thaw, who was a very important private collector and dealer in New York. They were, they were going to steer us the right way. And so we got our exposures, and on our little trips to New York, which I had to do business-wise, I'd always try to uh, schedule in an extra couple of days, and we'd go to all of the museums in New York. And uh, one of the things that we sort of said to ourselves, we can use as a guideline the collection of the New York Museum of Art. And if the art that we do collect has got to be comparable, hopefully better than. <laughs> and there are a couple of things that are better than. We have any number of tour groups that come through here, and I think that they would all say that it's a world-class collection of art, and that's really what we wanted.